in person and online. This morning, we'd like to uh, welcome Pastor Elaine Dent, who will be uh, graciously is helping us out this morning and while Pastor is still recuperating. Um, one announcement, and if I have left anything else out, please shout out. Uh, there is a 12:15 uh, um, meeting of the minds this afternoon. There will be light refreshments, but we would like as many of you all to attend as many as possible. It's something important. It's the financial situation that we're in right now, so it's important that you know that. It it doesn't follow immediately after sun, Sunday school, but we still have Sunday school this afternoon, th this morning, excuse me, and then uh, the meeting is at 12:15. Um, have I left anything out? Anyone? No? Okay. Thank you. And welcome, Pastor Dent. Thank you. the table when met by those in need God does not deal with us according to our sins but delights in granting pardon and mercy in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen.
boundless grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the wisdom of God, and the light of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. God among us, we gather in the name of your Son to learn love for one another. Keep our feet from evil paths. Turn our minds to your wisdom and our hearts to the grace revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
first lesson this morning comes from the book of Amos, who was called by God to prophesy in the northern kingdom of Israel. Peace and prosperity in Israel which led to corrupt business practices and oppression of the poor. The prophet declares that God will not tolerate such a situation. A reading from the prophet Amos, the eighth chapter. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over, so that we may sell grain in the Sabbath, so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the echo small and the shekel great, and practice deceit with fault balances, buying the poor for silver, and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, Surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. lesson this morning comes from 1st Timothy, the second chapter. The pastoral epistles offer insight in how, into how early Christians understood many practical matters, such as church administration and worship. The church's focused prayer on for others is an expression of the single-minded passion God has toward us in Jesus. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to Timothy, the second chapter. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, incessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings 
and all who are in high positions, so we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth, for there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am not, I am telling the truth. I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. Word of God, word of life. Thank you. reading from the gospel according to Luke the 16th chapter glory to you O Lord then Jesus said to the disciples there was a rich man who had a manager and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property so he summoned summoned him and said to him what is this I hear about you Give me an accounting of your management because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, what will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, how much do you owe my master? He answered, a hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 50. Then he asked another, how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters. For a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So for years, I have avoided preaching on this parable. What an odd story for Jesus to tell, a dishonest manager getting away with bad accounting, and then for Jesus to hold that manager up, praising him, uh, holding him up as an example for the children of light. And is that us, the children of light? Come to think of it, why did the rich landowner end up uh, praising his manager for cheating him even more drastically 
by reducing the farmer's debts. Did some of his manager's newfound popularity with the farmers begin to extend to him as well? Or some scholars have suggested that perhaps the rich landowner had been charging the farmers interest, apparently a common practice in the time of Jesus, even though charging interest was illegal in the law of Moses. So, was the manager simply reducing the amount of interest that the landowner was charging? But if so, do two wrongs make a right? And why would Jesus say, make friends for yourself with dishonest wealth? You can take that the wrong way, and then he says, you can't serve God and wealth. So, do you see why I've avoided preaching on this? <laughs> but this time is different. I'm retired, and I have three grandchildren, and both retirement and grandchildren have retaught me the importance of play. Stories are meant to play with, to play with us, to stretch our imaginations, and to be heard in different ways. Stories grow with us. We hear them differently when we're older than when we were younger. We notice things on the second or third or 15th time around. Stories can sound very different in the telling, depending on the inflection of one's voice and who's telling it. Stories can be acted out on stage and stories can shape our worldview. And maybe that's the point. Maybe Jesus is playfully inviting us to enact this story somehow in our lives. But how? Well, I don't have the answers, but here are some possibilities that we can play with. Maybe Jesus is playfully inviting these listeners to enact the life of forgiveness. The manager forgave the farmers a large portion of their debt. We don't know if the rich landowner followed through with firing the manager, but we do know that afterwards he acknowledged that his manager had been pretty smart about protecting himself by forgiving the debts of the farmers. A few chapters earlier in this Gospel of Luke, Jesus had taught his disciples what we call the Lord's Prayer. And Luke's version reads this way, forgive us our sins as we forgive everyone indebted to us. In this story, might Jesus be playfully asking us, inviting us to forgive? Or maybe this story encourages us to give priority to building good relationships and making friends instead of collecting material wealth. The manager had spent his employment to the landowner skimming off money for himself. He was not making friends with the farmers. He was using them to line his own pockets. But now he's caught and expects to be fired and he needs some friends. And so suddenly he forgives large portions of debt, hoping that he will be making some good relationships with people who will give him a helping hand when he needs it. Now, admittedly, that's, he's a bit self-serving here, and he's a little bit late. 
But can't you see the playfulness starting to come out? Farmers in the village street recognized the landowner and began thanking him, him for forgiving the debt that they owed. You and your manager are good examples in our community, sir, they would have been saying. And now the landowner experiences how positive it is to receive gratitude and support from those in the community. So if we played with this story, how might Jesus be inviting us to build relationships with others as a priority? Maybe with people whom we know or who are our neighbors and with whom we have not been intentional about building relationships, or maybe people we don't know at all yet. As children of light, if that is what we are, how does generosity of time and wealth and energy foster relationships? Janet Foggy, a minister in the Church of England, writes that she used to know a couple who were so generous and kind-hearted that they kept aside a small fund in their family budget for people who were going to tap them for a bit of cash here and there. Or when the bills, because they like to employ local tradespeople, might be a bit more than if they hired a big company. Reverend Foggy said that at the time, she thought it was strange to budget for losing money so openly, but the more she thought about it, rather than being foolish, the more generous that way of living might be. So perhaps Jesus invites the children of light to live in the way that's more ready to give rather than to take to accept that there are those in the world who might need money more than we do. In the end, it might be a good way to live, sharing resources, whether money or other kinds of wealth, in order to benefit others. And finally, at least for now, this playful story invites us to serve God rather than wealth the eternal more than the impermanent. Now, my wealth is more than money that I have in my bank or retirement accounts. My wealth is also part of a larger world economic system, a system that has a life of its own, a system that takes, usually, rather than gives that is more powerful than me as an individual. And when I hear that we can't serve wealth, both wealth and God, I've become aware of how my standard of living, which is wealthy by the world's standards, has come at the expense of our environment. And this is where the story stops being playful for me. And Jesus has me hooked. The turning point for me has been to start working at building generous relationships with my neighbors on my sister planet Earth. The water, the air, the soil, the creatures, and plants. Well, maybe not the spotted lantern fly. So I've taken a lot of little steps to decrease my negative impact on the environment because creation has become something I love and care about. But I'm still part of those powerful systems of energy use and food production and resource harvesting in which I've benefited and still am. And these systems are slow to change. 
Any individual changes my husband and I make, solar panels, cloth grocery bags, where I purchase my food, how I recycle, all, all of these seem so tiny and insignificant to what's going on with our planet. So like the dishonest manager, I and many of us others are too late in making good friends with our neighbor neighbor creatures and plants and planet. As I try to give back what was not mine in the first place, my earth neighbors are gifting me with space to be playful, space to heal as I walk outside, to notice beauty in the new pollinator garden, to laugh at the squirrels taking dust pat dust baths in the tree stump that we've left in the middle of our backyard to learn ways to be generous and hospitable to the to shelter the birds and to feed them and to let the clover flowers bloom a bit before i mow the lawn that makes the rabbits happy Okay, I won't build a relationship a though with that groundhog who wanted to make a home under my deck. My generosity has limits. But I take heart that God inspires my efforts to build a relationship and be generous with the environment. So we've played with this parable in, in several different ways. How do you think Jesus might be inviting you to play with this story? For each of us, it will be different. But here are some general questions for you, a child of light. Listen to your heart as I read them and pick one. Where might Jesus be inviting you to build a relationship? At work, at school, a neighborhood, a neighbor, an organization? Second, or where are you being invited to forgive or let go of what you think is owed you? Or, how can you focus more on generosity than on what you re
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Spirit, 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 Spirit. Let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. God, our Savior, you keep your church in faith and truth. Accompany those preparing for baptism or affirmation of baptism. Enlightened preachers, teachers, seminarians, seminarians, and all those who share your good news with the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Divine teacher, you instruct your children to be responsible stewards of your creation. Show us how best to care for the earth and its resources and guide those who work to develop sustainable practices. God of grace, hear our prayer. Ruler of the nations, you direct those in authority. Give leaders wisdom and compassion so that all may live in peace. Inspire public servants to follow the example of courageous leaders and safeguard the dignity of each person. God of grace, hear our prayer. Helper of the needy, you lift up those who are oppressed. Breathe justice into economic and social systems that perpetuate poverty and hunger. Sustain food ministries, clothing banks, and emergency shelters. God of grace, hear our prayer. Sustainer and giver of life, you bless this congregation with abundance. Instruct us in the proper and faithful use of wealth and resources that we share generously. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of glory, you gather your saints around your throne. Keep us thankful for the witness of those who have gone before us and bring us with them to the heavenly feast that has no end. God of grace, hear our prayer. Melinda and Keith ba Bailey, who are mourning the death of their mother, Alma. For the recovery of Pastor Beth, Best. Sherry Snyder, who continues to deal with heart issues and cancer issues. Gary Snyder, who continues to deal with heart heart issues and cancer. cancer. And those of you online, please share those in the comments so that others can uphold you in prayer as well. 
gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share a sign of that peace. I thought I saw him. So as we begin our meal together today, the, um, just reminder that all of you at home I, to have some bread and some juice or wine with you. And for those of you who are taking it in the pews um, and for those at home, so when I lift the uh, bread, I invite you to lift the bread that you are going to consume. And when I lift the cup, I invite you to lift it as well. And then um, for those of you at home for that which you do not consume, we encourage you to take it outside and nourish the ground with um, what is left over. I invite you to stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave th thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
And I invite those of you at home to raise the cup. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord. Unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see.
Please stand as you're able. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We will. We will.